So what does it really matter for a system to be OT or IT? At some level, devices are devices and the data you want to protect is just data, right? Uh, what difference does it make? Well, one difference is in IT systems, most often the overriding concern is confidentiality of data, followed closely by integrity of the system. Availability of the system is also important, but it isn't the driving motivation in system design in the same way as confidentiality and integrity. Classic examples of IT systems are things like email, shared storage, backup systems, internet facing websites, internal corporate websites. In all these systems, protecting the confidentiality of the data is of paramount importance. Um, it's an obvious characteristic. For example, it, it wouldn't be acceptable for the contents of the company email server to leak out outside of the company or even inside of the company for that matter. Uh, hand in hand with that is maintaining the integrity of the data. So for example, it wouldn't be acceptable if your company's email only reached the intended recipient, say 95% of the time, or if your payroll system only worked 99% of the time, right? A uh, 5% loss of email or failing to pay employees 1%, even 1% of the time could be devastating for a company. On the other hand, having your email system or the payroll system go down for an hour or even a day, uh, it would be disruptive but it wouldn't be devastating, uh, and it likely would be forgotten as soon as it returns, shortly after you know, it, it would be in the past and no one would, would care very much. In OT systems, however, the situation is different. Instead of delivering email or serving up web pages, OT systems deliver functions like implementing the power grid, refining petroleum, running rail systems, and manufacturing cars. They automate, automate things like robots, motors, reactors, and even less obvious but very important systems such as uh, cooling and heating systems for a large facility, you know, say a hospital or a manufacturing facility. The consequence of failures in these areas can include environmental impacts, disruption of supply chains and, and very large scales, injury of people, and even death. So the stakes are much higher in these OT systems. For this reason, availability is vitally important, followed very closely by system integrity, which is actively and continuously monitored, with confidentiality as a distant third consideration. In IT systems, a cyber incident might first be dealt with by shutting down affected or vulnerable systems. Uh, you know, in the interest of protecting data and preserving, preserving system integrity while the threat is mitigated. In an OT system, the same incident might be dealt with by doing nothing, at least not immediately. That seems odd, but you got to realize that OT systems are designed differently. Because of the risks and significance of what they do, there's redundancy at all levels. The servers are redundant, networks, even the physical location of the systems, um, there will be redundant setups and, and physically separated locations. So if the integrity of, of the system is deemed intact, then it'll keep operating without interruption while the incident is, ha is handled. If the system integrity is compromised, then redundant systems are employed to keep uh, in, in the interest of preserving availability. System disruptions only occur when they can no longer operate safely, but not before. And every step is taken in implementing and designing the systems to avoid those interruptions. Another aspect of the difference of priorities in system design and operation is that OT systems achieve their stability by remaining unchanged as much as possible. This is one you hear about a lot. In other words, vendors choose a hardware, software, and network configuration, rigorously test it, and then keep it that way for the life of the system. While the lifespan of your laptop might be, say, three to five years, the lifespan of PLCs and RTUs can be decades. Um, the workstations and servers which interact with those PLCs and RTUs can also have a lifespan of 10 to 15 years. That doesn't mean every component is expected to last that long. They're not making magic Dell servers that can last 15 years, but rather it means that the vendor maintains a stock of those devices so they can be replaced in kind for those periods of that time. Um, to put this in perspective, Think about a desktop computer you were using in the year 2006. 
right? Now consider that in an OT environment, if that system fails today, you might see a brand new one of those, of that exact hardware and software come out of the box next week, right? Even though Microsoft might publicly declare the end of life for a system, a lot of times they have agreements with these large OT system vendors to extend support and availability of patches for much longer than is available to the public. So this pressure is, is one way to characterize it by vendors to minimize change is one of the fundamental challenges in OT because it often restricts how third parties interact with their systems. You know, maybe you're allowed to install software on servers in an OT environment, but sometimes you aren't. So solving problems like cybersecurity becomes an exercise in being flexible and nimble to find the best solution possible given the circumstances. In the IT world, the IT group of a company tends to be king and they dictate how all software and hardware is deployed. In the OT world, the vendor is king. So layering things like cybersecurity on top of a, a system is a compromise every time. Um, and a final significant difference is the communication layer in OT systems, uh, which is another key component of their stability and the real-time speed they require. OT vendors often shy away from things like encryption and even authentication and in, in the communication that happens at the lower levels because those things add complexity and they add risk. Instead, what they do is they design with the assumption that the networks where those things exist are well protected and encapsulated, and then they optimize communication for speed and stability. The need for certainty in real-time communication, it makes traditional IT methods like network scans, uh, which are a fairly common and normal thing, those become an unacceptable risk. In other words, you, you're simply not allowed to flood a network with a lot of traffic to discover all the devices or all the open ports or to put malformed packets onto the network to validate that nothing breaks, right? In an OT environment, that is very much out of bounds and, and can't be done. So even at this layer, you have to find other ways to achieve results in a less intrusive manner than the go-to methods you would use in the IT world.